So in 2013, we purchased Image Creations of Florida. And Image Creations of Florida is, was a established frame shop, um, has been since the 1980s. The origins of ICF, as it's affectionately known, is cast paper. I'm looking for a piece. It's around. The handmade paper that you saw as you walked through. Um, we have an international presence when it comes to cast paper. Um, as the world changes. Oh, thank you, Scott. Yeah, here's a little one. It's a seashell. You can see it's uh, 3D. And it's 3D because it starts out as a relief sculpture in clay. And then a mold is made and paper pulp is poured into the mold. And then it comes out like this white and we can um, do very large pieces too uh, we've got molds around the corner there maybe you've seen some of them but many of them are like 24 inches tall and even larger yeah and then sometimes they get painted and we have artists that paint them so that was the claim the claim to fame for icf that was the beginning of icf uh -huh. yeah um so we brought them on board because we were spending an awful lot of money uh, purchasing framing stretcher bars that kind of stuff out of house it just it made good business sense we inherited two amazing mm -hmm. employees I really like them a lot they really like us a lot the it it works well oh here we go here's winter the dolphin and these are for sale at the marine aquarium we make them here mm. <coughs> how much do we sell these for uh, I believe the aquarium sells them for hundred and ten dollars a piece Does winter have a white tail? Is that why it's called winter? Uh, winter is a dolphin that lost its tail. Oh. There's a whole movie about it. Oh. Yeah. So that's a um, prosthetic. Amazing. Yeah, it's a beautiful movie. And uh, the second movie is Dolphin Tail. Yeah, I've seen his name here and there. He's a celebrity in Clearwater. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful, it's a tear-jerking movie. I love that movie. Anyway, part of our purpose in life is to help artists grow their business. And so we do that, obviously, by helping people to uh, be more educated. Now, a lot of people are intimidated by framing. Uh, a lot of people feel that it's complicated, that they can't possibly know, that they don't want to deal with it. And that's really fine. Uh, but the bottom line is if you are an artist and you are selling your work, you can sell the whole package and make more money. If you choose to be an artist who approaches their art as a business, you don't have to, but if you choose to. Now, I'm going to tell you a bunch of stuff so that you can feel secure and educated on framing. And then I'm going to tell you you don't need to sell framing if you don't want because you can find a nice partner. And I know a nice partner, but that's getting to the end of the story. The story has a happy ending. Let's go through all the middle part first. Um, there is art that just begs to be s framed. And if you think about the traditional um, decor and you think about the people who might be walking through the Coconut Grove Art Festival and some of the higher end art festivals, they wouldn't consider buying something if it's not framed. It's unfinished. It's a pain in the ass for them to have to go out and do that searching for it. And so somebody might decide I'm going to or not going to frame based on, or I'm going to or not going to buy based on whether I feel like the piece is finished or not. Are yes. you saying people want the work framed though? Even, if, even like expensive? I thought some people would say I don't want to frame because I, I want to put my own frame on there because I, most people, that's a minority of the people, right? There are two sides to every argument. Mm -hmm. uh, before we bought a frame shop, we only sold gallery wrap canvas. I'm going to talk about canvas. Yeah. And I talked to an awful lot of people at an awful lot of art festivals that said it looks unfinished to me. I also talked to a lot of people who said I have a contemporary design. I wouldn't put a frame in my home. So what I'm just sharing with you is years and years and years of this is what people have told me and the online research that I got to do in preparation for tonight. Um, it's like you should never buy a piece of art to match your decor, and those people are right. And you should always match your throw pillows to your art, and those people are right. 
Let me ask you this when you give somebody a gift, like I, I sometimes give somebody a gift to someone I'm on my work with. And most of the time it's our friend. They have one friend. I'm like, I almost got insulted. He didn't tell me, but I could just feel it. You can be unframed. Right. What am I going to do with it? You know, I'm going to just file it away. You know? they're exactly. They're going to put it under their bed in a box and they're going to pull it out and go, wow, I really like that piece. I wish I put it on my wall. Because you're giving them extra steps to have to take. Most of the people give me art, though, art, it's not framed. The artists that I know, when they give yeah. me art, generally speak, it's not framed. And right, they because... They just assume it's not framed, because, yeah, I'm giving it to you. It's up to you to frame it, you know? Both viewpoints are valid. Yeah, okay. The question is, I think part of it is higher-end art. When you're selling, and let's just define, for sake of argument, higher-end art equals over $500 for a... 20 by 30. Just as a point, I'm making this up. But again, from decades of selling art, um, that's a 20 by 30 right up there, the world, the black sphere. And a lot of people wouldn't buy that unless it looked like that. Because they would feel like it's more finished. Mm -hmm. But we'll get them. Yeah, and people have the practical things like, oh, I'm paying, I'm already paying this. I don't want to have to pay more money now for the framing. That's true. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, from you, the artist's standpoint, having it framed gives a higher perceived value to the piece. Okay. That means you can charge more for the piece. Mm -hmm. You can make an upcharge on the cost of the framing. It protects the art. See how I just toss this down upside down? I didn't hurt it because I have this sticking out mm -hmm. and it's easier to hang. Mm -hmm. So that's some of the practicalities. If you're going to buy framing, if you're going to sell your work, you need to treat it like a business, therefore you must have a resale certificate. It, I was talking to an interior designer earlier today, we were talking about sales tax. She's like, well, I go to Home Goods and I buy stuff and then I sell it to my clients. You're buying retail and then you're selling it retail. It's like going to Target and selling it to Walmart. You want to buy wholesale and sell retail. So the ability to buy framing for a smaller price, there's a bunch of ways to do it. One of which is to get a resale certificate so that you can buy wholesale. You can also go to thrift stores. You can also go to yard sales. You can paint your frames as a part of your painting. Mm -hmm. um, you should always ask, do you have resale prices when you deal with a framing? When you're dealing with a gallery, and we're talking about traditional galleries, many of them will insist that it be framed. If they happen to be a framing gallery, they will insist that they frame it mm -hmm. at your expense. So you need to ask that question, does it need to be framed and who's paying for the framing? Because you might get a surprise. Oh, I sold three pieces, great, I want my commission check. Well, you know, we took the cost of framing out of there first. And you owe us money. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. I've heard, I've seen it happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's not pretty. In my very first show in Tampa, like 10 years ago, they were very excited about my artwork and they wanted to frame one of my pieces. I thought they were going to frame it for free. And then they gave me a $225 bill. <laughs> but she said, oh, let me frame this for you. Oh, okay. But, yeah. you know, it, it didn't even occur to me that they were going to send the bill. You <laughs> thought it was a supportive gesture? Yeah, I did. Why don't we do that? <laughs> I was, I was kind of naive, you know. I was, yeah. you know, having my first exposure uh -huh. to the but uh, yeah, you need to be very clear on who's paying for it and how much and what comes out of where. So a lot back to what you were saying, 90% um, of the world can't envision stuff. So if I show you this piece, yes. It is, it's way cool, it's wonderful, and you want to hang it in your home. 
but if you have the kind of home where it needs to be framed and you can't envision it, then it becomes scary, you need to make a decision, you might make a mistake, and so you don't buy it. However, if I see it like this, there are some people out there that would see this as a finished piece. All they have to do is go home and put a nail on the wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No right or wrong. Just is. Good to be aware of. And I'm sitting here thinking, okay, should I hang it this way or this way? <laughs> <laughs> we can rewire it. <laughs> so, um, Basically, all this says is that you have a risk of potentially losing the sale. Now, there's a lot of things you can do without, what's that? So basically, uh, a black frame is the is way to go? A black frame? Ask me that at the end of the conversation. Oh, okay, okay. Let's say you're at an art festival, and you don't want to spend the money to frame all your pieces, because you're not certain they're going to sell. And I'll come back to this because I have some later slides that address this. But typically, and I use Scott as an example just because it's really easy. He's here and I, I know his stuff. So most of his work, or had been for a number of years, he pretty much only did four sizes. And therefore, we could have always very easily, had we been smart, which we were not, we should have. Um, had a bunch, three or four black frames in each of the sizes. Is it a frame that's keeping you from buying this piece? That's what I've heard. Well, let me help you, I can just do this. Yeah. And then you're not paying to have all of your pieces framed and you can accommodate those people who mm -hmm. really wish they had that. Mm -hmm. You can't go lo wrong with a little black frame. Um, well, that's true, you can. It doesn't look good with everything. That sure does look. It's like the little black dress. But we get to that later. <laughs> now, you can say to them, I'm hearing that you love this piece, that you have a wall where you need a piece of art, and this would work. The price is good. You both love it. But if only it were framed, let me get it framed for you. And I'll help you with that. I have clients that come here with their clients and we frame so that the artist can be involved which makes the, uh, their client feel better and they can be involved so the artist isn't making a decision incorrectly. We also have people that will send their clients here, we'll pay you a commission. Um, there's lots of ways to get around it. I have a question about that. Yeah. So I like the idea of you offering, you like saying we, we could frame it for you like this, do you like this or do you like that? Do you discuss, um, do you mention to the person, uh, for this frame, you know, it'll be $175 more, like, do you throw that out there? Would well, you figure, too? first you try to get them to say, yes, I love this. Uh-huh. If they love it, they'll pay it. Yeah. If they're budget-minded, then you might say, I understand that you love this. Um, however, it's going to be an extra $300. And if that's a problem, then let me get a different black frame for you. I can work out a solution for you. Okay. But you do mention it while you're offering the frame, the money. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mention it until they're in love with it. Until they say yes. Yeah. yeah. I like that makes it for me. Great. Kind of thing. Yeah. Well, you understand that it's because of the frame, it's going to be an additional amount. And I believe that this size, this frame is going to be this amount. Mm -hmm. Do you have any formula, and if I'm getting ahead to another thing, okay. just cut me off, but um, do you have a formula as far as if the value of the art is X, then the frame shouldn't be any more than, you know, or the frame is in this category, th this price range, if the art is in that price range? Most of our clients double. Whatever they pay us, they'll double to X. Okay. Um, but I mean, like, if, if, if the painting is, the price if of the painting is, let's say, 1200 Then it's between 7% to 15%. That's what I was, okay. Yeah. 
between seven and fifteen percent of the value of the art. Is the cost of is actually what you should spend on the frame. Mm -hmm. And then you should double it. Okay. So for the artist is spending seven to fifteen percent on the frame and then the customer and then whatever I have paid you for instance, the client is paying twice that for the finished product. Right. Got it. Thank you. Because that carries not only your expense but also your time, energy, and aggravation. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which has value. Yeah. And sometimes I'll bring a bottle of wine too, instead of yeah, always absolutely. being on you. I'm I'm good with that. <laughs> so very so very rough, it's thirty percent of the uh, third plus thirty percent of the price of the pink. Yeah. yeah, that's a good Roughly. formula. It's yeah. good to have a some yes. formula. Yeah. Okay. Agreed. Thank you. Well one thing you could do is you could like pick out several frames that you like that go well with your work. Uh -huh. And then have your standard sizes and have it all calculated out in advance and be very precise. Right. Yeah, thank you. I was just wondering as far as, you know, because if you gives you know, you, we've all seen work that is like over framed, you know, where it's like, okay, the painting is this, and then the frame is, you know, 60%. I'll take it without the, the frame, please. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Or, you know, people who have something like a printed something they really like, and they have it matted and framed, and it costs twice as much as they paid for the print, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I went to a gallery one time, and the photograph was eighty dollars, but when it was framed, it was eight hundred dollars. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's kind of crazy. So, like, just to be, you know, so yeah. people don't think you're just kind of out in left field with it all. Like you say, to be an artist, but also to be a savvy business person that yeah, has a exactly. practical approach to things. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. So, in the most seven to fifteen percent. Yeah. Our Thank cost. You. Yeah. Now, minimally, for the artists that are doing shows, and I throw a lot of stuff, we're going to go over a lot of things on mats and colors and that kind of stuff, too. Um, we have a lot of artists that do shows, and we do custom mats for them. So let's say that you crop your art in a certain way. Uh, you're selling reprints, paper prints. Uh, but you want the outside dimensions to be something if they chose to go get a standard frame. Um, a lot of times when people are at shows and they're showing their work, they'll just go ahead and put it, the, their art piece in between the mat, the backing board, and sleeve it. Are you following me or should I ask Scott to run up and grab? You mean not, not fix it in there, is that what you're saying? Will you grab some of your um, art prints? I meant to have some in there. Um, you put a little bit of tape? Mm -hmm. On the corners, right, and it's then not permanent, yeah. right, exactly. Yeah. Um, we have three or four artists that, before every show, reach out to us, and we do between two hundred and five hundred mats for them because wow. they sell through. So what I know is that if you minimum, if you don't want a frame because you're scared of commitment or whatever, <laughs> minimally, if you mat it. And then, here's an example. Just real simple. Yeah. You know, those little things that you do add so much value. Again, you know, a piece, you will look at it, and you put a manning around it, all of a sudden it's twice as good, you know? Then you put a frame, frame around it, it even looks even better, you know? Yeah. So that's an 11 by 14 image on a 16 by 20 piece of paper. And I did that specifically because someone could put a 16 by 20 frame on it like Jerry just did. Or they could put 11 by 14 frame on it if they trimmed it down. So we're talking about standard sizes where you can... So you go a little bit bigger frames. so you can trim it down. Exactly. Wow. And in this case, I didn't put a mat on it. That's just a piece of paper flat with a backing board and a clear bag. Mm -hmm. Some people do prefer to spend a couple extra dollars and have a cut beveled mat, you know, and that can make it look nicer too. It just yeah. adds a little bit more expense to it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can go either way on that. You know, I think that sometimes people might want to, you know, pick out a different colored mat or they might want to customize it in some way. And I've decided not to put a mat in there. But many artists do, you know, have pre cut mats in white, and we offer those. And you can buy like 50 of them from us for a very good price. 
No, I was just, you said that was on top of that in there? Well, Sorry. right, what Jerry's holding in that sleeve is just a, a paper print on top of a backing board. There's no cut oh, yeah. That one looks like it's a mat. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's no I'm recommending people really that. do for that. It has its own board. Although, mm -hmm. I just do the board like that, and you have a lot of flexibility. Okay. But a lot of artists do like the look of the bevel mat. Yeah. And so Jerry's saying, we do sell that to a lot of artists if you want that look. Because then if that were framed, it wouldn't be protected. They'd have to get a mat anyway, wouldn't yeah. they? And glass, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But it's what you pay for a setup like this, and then what you can charge you can charge four to five times per seat value. Okay. Presentation. Presentation is everything. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a big difference. I almost did my show without uh, frames and then I uh, held up a corner to it and said, I have to do that because then I can charge more money for it. A lot mm -hmm. more, more than the cost of framing by far. Mm -hmm. so it just makes the thing look so much more upscale. It's true. So going through some basics, what's the purpose of a frame? So the purpose of the frame is to put your attention on the art. Uh, you don't want anybody to walk in, obviously, and go, wow, what a great frame job you've got there. Well, I could tell the story. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. And so just this, this is kind of a fun show and tell. Um, this could be anywhere. Right? We do uh, Create and Cabernet here, which is a group painting class. And this is just something I grabbed from one of our group painting classes. Um, and you have something like this. And then all of a sudden, it has newfound importance. Mm -hmm. Isn't that fun? Really does, yeah. <coughs> yeah. And this, this just tickles me so much. So it was inspired by Clearwater Beach, of course it was. But boom, we just went to the other side of the planet. Yeah. Isn't that neat? Yeah. <coughs> so what do you think of this? You like it? You don't like it? Oh, I prefer the black. To be I don't like it. This is kitcheny to me. Yeah, it's it belongs too in, in somebody's kitchen. Yeah, it's too. It's like a. Yeah, it's kind of paint by numberish or something like that. You like the black one best? Yeah, but you know what? I see some real white gold. For some reason, it looks really great. You know, really like that white. You know, right? Gold. I have it right here. Oh, it's too. It's too small for this one. Yeah. And here's really bad. I had to show you one that's just really bad. Yeah, that's really nice. You like that? And then that's yeah. child artwork. That's like something your kid. Yeah. Your Isn't that? Yeah. Good call. It's, it's like a kid. Yeah. I would have done like the the blue in the sky. I like the bamboo, like antique gold one. Mm -hmm. And then last, but not least, on this one. I like oh, that. That's very nice. You like that? Yeah. It's so personal. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's so it personal. Is. It is. And you say, don't worry about the furniture when you do this? Don't worry about the color of the furniture when you do this? <laughs> we'll get there. Okay. So why do you want a frame? <laughs> so works on paper can be damaged. Right? It's precious. Watercolor's precious. Drawings are precious. And so the purpose of the mat, which you mentioned before, the purpose of the mat is to keep your artwork off the glass. And then the purpose of the frame is to hold the whole thing together. Um, let's start playing around, coming up with colors. You should frame to the art. You should not frame to the room. It's true that if you live in a space that's traditional, 
you'll have an awful lot of this kind of stuff in it. It's kind of literal, isn't it? Gold. Say again, please. Gold will go out with anything anyway, right? Uh, gold is, oftentimes gold doesn't work a lot with contemporary places. It yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Mm -mm. I just think if you have a glass and crumb coffee table, for instance. But you could take something like this, which I think like looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I can take this green one. And it's not bad. Not bad. Right. It's a lovely painting, by the way. You think that's lovely? Mm -hmm. I do too, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Hey honey, she likes your painting. Thanks. Yeah. I really like the light in the river there. Did you, did you, do you know that I actually did that on the computer? Did you? It's really, I really like it. Oh, oh it's for sale, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> really? I'll, I'll trade you something. How's oh, that? Okay. <laughs> Charge you for the frame, though. It's okay. We'll, <laughs> we'll work something out. I'm sure we can work it out. It's also okay not to have all of the frames in your room be the same. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing a frame of the week post on Facebook, and I just did a post on baby PJs, where she's got three kids, and we took baby PJs and we put it between two pieces of glass, and each one is um, they're beautiful wood frames. And they're not from the same family, but there's something about them so that they hang well together. That makes for a more interesting presentation. Mm -hmm. You can be very geranimals about this. You can make it all oak. You can make it all cherry. You can have all black. And you can have these two frames coexisting peacefully. And that's okay, mm -hmm. as long as there's some similarities to it. Maybe it's the shape of it, the, the slope of the front. Mm -hmm. It's okay. But you don't have to have a beautiful gilded something like this for only in a traditional household. It can go in a transitional household. Um, I'm trying to find... I mean, it's kind of crazy. But somebody out there is going to like it. Yeah. That totally works. Mm -hmm. And that's contemporary. That's just more what I just said. If you listen to the artwork, it will tell you how it wants to be framed. And I say that all of the time, and people say, what does that mean? So I'm going to explain to you what that means. You also, as an artist, don't want to have a budget mentality. You want to figure out what is the best frame for my art piece and then charge the client accordingly. Because if you put a budget frame on a gorgeous art piece so you can keep the cost at a certain place, you're hurting yourself. And there's always deals to be made wherever you are. So what does it mean that the art speaks to you? Obviously, if you take a look at something like this, your first thought is not this. You would want something that's kind of sleek. You would want something that might be chrome, silver, or black. Although somewhere in the world somebody likes this. No doubt. And you probably wouldn't do this. But we have put this frame on some of Scott's work. 
So when people say, I can only use this in a traditional home and I would never use an artist like him because he's a contemporary artist, well, I have people that buy his work and put it in these frames mm -hmm. because that's what speaks to them. So like I was showing with the black frames, there's, there's, there's ways to put things together so that you have some themes. Again, whether it's the slope of the molding, whether it's a color in the molding, it pulls a color out of the art. <coughs> so here's a piece where if you take a look at the eyebrow and you take a look at the molding, see that? Not bad? No, it's not bad. There's your traditional and traditional. When you're doing a larger painting, you would want to use a larger, more impactful frame. Mm -hmm. You need to pay attention to what a frame adds to a piece of artwork. So let's do some math. I have a 20 by 30 piece of art. I want to put a two and a half inch mat on it. Two and a half is standard. That's what museums do. That's when you do art shows. Um, typically it's two and a half inches white mat. And then I'm gonna have a two inch mat, a two inch frame, okay? So my 20 by 30, you just add five inches, right? Because two and a half and two and a half. So I'm now a 25 by 35. And then I add another four inches because I've got two inches of frame over here and two inches of frame over here. So my 35 by 20 by 30, 25 by 35 just became 29 by 39. See how that works? So a lot of times how you frame has something to do with the space it is going to go into. Because if my space will only allow 30 inches, then something needs to give. I need a smaller mat, I need a smaller frame, I need a different place. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever thinks about that there's two sides. There's a left and a right, there's a top and a bottom. Okay? Mm -hmm. We stack frames a lot. And what that means is that we will take a frame and put another frame inside of it. And I have, I have some examples on here. Um, what they say is that if you have a frame and then you have a mat, or if you're working with canvas instead of a mat, you'd use a liner like a linen liner, that that, those two need to be different sizes than each other. So either your frame is thicker than your mat or your liner, or it's the other way around for visual balance. Mm -hmm. So basically trust your gut. So when you look at it, you go, ah, that doesn't look quite right. Here, I'm going to grab this one and show you. Well, here's, um, See how the mat is wider than the frame? Isn't that interesting? Because people always think that the frame needs to be the widest thing. It doesn't. The one next to it is about the same size, right? The mat and the frame is about... The mat much is much smaller than the frame. It is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the mat... Exactly. An inch and a half. 
Это не штука? Mm -hmm. Это не This is an example of a specialty item. We do a lot of double glass. This is a double-sided piece of art. She's a paper artist that we do a lot for. Uh, Patsy's a beautiful artist. So it's a double-sided piece of art, two pieces of glass on either side. It sits in its pedestal or it hangs. It's a great room divider. So what happens if you choose not to mat? So I have a space, I don't want a mat. The art doesn't need a mat. I like it being close. Mm -hmm. um, then you can go with a wider frame. I'm looking for an example of that. I don't know. There we go, on the top mm -hmm. with the uh, corners on it. Mm -hmm. It's framed to the piece. Yeah. It's an interesting piece. It's a very strong piece. If we put a mat on that, it would have to be dark or maybe that peach color. Mm -hmm. So instead, we just used a, a hefty frame. That's a large frame for a piece of that size. But it works because there's no mat. Mm -hmm. So how wide should mm -hmm. your mat be? Well, the rules change with hemlines. It's fashion. Framing is fashion. Um, and so in the beginning, uh, mats were neutral in color. They were white. They were beige. They were cream. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, people start to use mats to pop color, which I think is a lot of fun. We've got these pieces. This has a, this is really dirty too, sorry about that. Uh, we'll get to this, this is a fillet. Mm -hmm. So it's a piece of, so we've got the artwork with glass, because it's paper, it's actually flexi. And then there's a fillet, and then there's a linen liner, and then a very traditional frame. Mm -hmm. it's like two It's just very, very ornate. He didn't like the work, that's why it's still here and it's dusty. But he paid for it. I was going to say just the opposite, it looks really he nice. What's that? I was going to say just the opposite, I think it looks great. I thought it looked great. That's what he ordered. I'm waiting for him to change his mind. Pop of color. So what we have here is we dimple edged the artwork. We ripped it, fancy word for ripping it. <coughs> a beige frame, I'm sorry, a beige mat, um, the red mat, and then another beige mat. So sweet. Now, a lot of people assume that if you're going to use multiple mats, that they have to be different colors. And the truth be told, if what you want to do is make your art look really important, then you do multiple mats of the same color. And I will show you. Aren't they adorable? That's gorgeous. I think. I ask you about mats. In the old days, they used to make the bottom weighted. Yeah, weighted. We'll get to it. I love that he comes to these. <laughs> That's a great photograph. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the mat really helps the image pop. 
It puts the attention where the attention should be on the art. What about doing like just an off color, like close but all, like almost the same color? Soft blue. It's okay. Generally, what you'll do is you'll pick a color out of the artwork. Like a cream and a darker cream. It's okay. That gives a depth. That, that gives okay. a depth to it. Then you're starting to play with recessed, you know, the, that cuts okay. to your color theory. Yeah. So a bottom weighted mat is one where the border, you've got your top, you've got your sides, and the bottom is, of course, larger. And that's done for a variety of reasons. Reasons. It's very classic looking. It gives something importance. It's also practical. Let's say that you have a piece, a 16 by 24, and you want to put it in a frame that doesn't accommodate a 16 by 24, so you need extra space down there. Um, when the bottom half of a image is darker, oftentimes they'll bottom weight it. This is a piece we framed recently. They wanted it like that. We actually didn't have this color of aubergine, also known as eggplant, also known as purple. And so we printed this mat. So if you can't find the mat color that you must have, we'll print it. That's a printed mat. This is a beautiful, beautiful piece, and this is printed this way to be classic, or matted this way to, for the classic look. Mm -hmm. So you've got your art, you've got a bottom weight mat, and you've got a fillet. It's a bamboo fillet, and then a shiny black frame. Very contemporary. It came out really nice. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. We also sell suede mats, metallic mats, gold and silver mats, although I don't have samples of those because they charge too much. So the possibilities are endless, um, but what we try to do here, and if you're working with somebody, you want to stay very focused because you can sort of mm -hmm. lose it in doing so. This, I think, is another gorgeous one. This is a wine label. And it's just uh, the frame, and then that's got a fillet on the inside. Does anybody not know what a fillet is? So a fillet is kind of like a teeny tiny little frame that sits inside a frame to give it extra dimension. So this frame doesn't have that dot on it. We put that dot on it by adding a second piece. Black frame red fillet so this just says that to have the accent matte the extra little color can really um, make it look better here's another one of Patsy's pieces so we have the frame we have a fillet inside and then we have two mats and as a, a paper artist, we always put spacers on hers mm -hmm. so that the glass never touches the paper because that would damage it. So is that, um, the, the fillet is silver and then the... Um, There's a black mat and a whitish mat. Okay. Yeah. Now, because of the bevel, the way mm -hmm. the mat is cut, Yeah. You can get uh, black core mats, white core mats, mm -hmm. uh, different colored core mats. That's an inexpensive way to look like you have multiple mats. Because if you want two, three, and four mats, we have to charge you. Mat charge times two, three, and four. Mm -hmm. So if you get a black core mat, which is essentially, it's white on one side and black on the underside, and you have your frame or cut it so that you can see that tiny little black strip which is part of what you're seeing in between. Okay. 
it looks like another map. It dresses it up. Now, pH balance, acid free, depending on the quality of your art, the importance of your art, where you're going to be, um, you're you become a little bit limited if you're going to insist on acid-free mats. Um, we love acid-free. We believe in acid-free. And for fine art, you want to use acid-free. Well, the reason you want to use acid-free is because uh, it doesn't um, come off on the artwork and it won't change colors on you. The reason paper becomes yellow is because the acid in the paper. There's your uh, spot of color. Isn't that gorgeous? See that gold there is really nice. The frame is very plain. And that, I, I like a very plain gold frame. It's even though even whiter than that, you know. It looks very nice. Very I'll nice. I have a, I have a strong opinion that each artist has their go to frame. Okay. Yeah. And maybe that's your go to frame. No, they're too expensive. <laughs> no, they don't have to be. No, they don't have to be. It just depends on what you get, where you find it. Okay. I got a whole uh, shelf of gold frames right there at 10 bucks a piece. Hard to put together. Tell who you know. Um, so this is what we were talking about before. You want, for your mat, you want to pull a color out of your photograph or out of your art. Uh, depending on where you want the highlight to be, where you want to direct the person's eye. Um, we talked about fillets. Mm -hmm. This is kind of fun. Um, she had the swordfish. We actually painted the two pieces of cast paper to go with. I think it's a beautiful use of a blue mat. That's one frame. It looks like it's stacked. It looks like it's two frames, but it's not. It just happens to be the design, what's also known as the profile of that particular frame. So the profile of that frame is starting with the inner, like, whitish blue? Yep, right here. Okay. Yeah, good that idea. Really it really works, works very well. Yeah. And that's a white core mat, so it's bevel cut, so that you just get that sweet little white strip, which really gives a nice separation between the art and the color. I've seen it that way where you can almost avoid having a mat where the frame has the white element in it. Absolutely. And uh, if you're on the, on the budget, you can almost not have a mat. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. No problem with that. Designing things with multiple openings. So let's say you're a photographer or even an artist that puts together a series of things. So it's what you want to do is this is wider than this. You're going to look at the whole world differently now, aren't you? Isn't this fun? You said wider. Wider. Yeah. There is more space. Top and bottom than in between. Yeah. yeah. Here we go on this one. If you designed it or tried to frame it so that it was the same amount of space, it might make you feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And you might not know why. So I want to tell you. <laughs> the other thing searches for equality. <laughs> so make it obvious it's not equal. Yes. Okay? Because if it's, if it's equal, you're going to, I don't know, my eye always goes for that, you know? Yeah. So if you make it obvious it's not equal, then your eye doesn't, doesn't question it. Yeah. 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 And that's what we want to do. We don't want to look at the mat. We want to look at the beautiful baby. Board paintings. So board paintings you typically frame similarly as you would canvas. There's a number of ways to do it. We're really big on the floating frame. This is a stick of floating frame. So what is a floating frame? 
It's a frame that you put a canvas into and it looks like it's floating. Of course. <laughs> Works out very nice. So you see the canvas, you see the edges, but for those people who really like frames in their home, it's complete. Now we have lots of control here. Um, we don't. We can control how much space goes right here. We can control the depth, how high or low it goes. It's amazing. Some little detail. How much. Difference little detail can make. You know? Yeah. People don't know why they like or they don't like something. They just know that they're comfortable or uncomfortable. So there's this whole thing called visual dissidence. Mm -hmm. I've been studying visual dissidence for years. And it's fascinating. This, I, I created this. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have. It's interesting. Yeah. 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 Love, love, love this piece. So we have, um, this is a shadow box frame, meaning it's deep. The edge is deckled, meaning we ripped it. So we floated the art on top of the mat so that when you look at it, there's a shadow and there's two extra mats. So how, how do you secure that to the back so that it's uh, loading like it's that. called hinge so when we take a piece of art we have a couple of choices we can mount it and when we mount it we dry mount it and we use um, a release glue because we think that nobody should have to make a commitment forever mm -hmm. and so let's say you say you know what I wanted this mounted and now I don't want it mounted anymore we can heat activate it and take it off. Depending on the kind of paper it is, um, depends on whether that would damage it or not. We're working on a watercolor piece right now. They really want it mounted. It's an original. Is it like arches type paper? Like, so does that, that would damage or wouldn't damage? You would want to hinge that. So what we would do is we'll take a couple pieces of acid-free tape and one, two, three little pieces and you put, just put it in there. And that's okay because that's why you get the shadow, which is part of the beauty of it. And that's very specific to the piece. Yes. Right. What was this? Was this printed on watercolor paper? I don't recall. Okay. We talked a lot in the beginning of the conversation about pricing. So we're not going to go over that again. Just make sure that your uh, expenses are covered. Mm -hmm. Don't but, forget. But then that's when you're personally doing it yourself. So if I have to pay someone to frame it, then... Make sure your expenses are covered. So just cover it. You can't inflate it because you will already pay the if you come to me as an artist and you buy three hundred dollars worth of framing for your uh, artwork, I hope that you charge your client at least four fifty for the framing portion of the artwork. Okay. So let's say it's three hundred for your art and three hundred for the framing equals six hundred. Please sell it for seven fifty. But that's what I was asking you earlier. You wouldn't. That's what I was trying to get to. If you had a $300 painting, you wouldn't spend $300 for the frame as well, you would might. you? You might. Because I was kind of thinking as far as like, if you have a lot and you're building a house, you wouldn't like over improve, for instance, on the land. You know what I'm saying? Like you wouldn't build. What we were just talking about a piece that cost 50, what was it? It was $50 and then it got framed and it sold for 800? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you would. Okay, but I thought that was an, an example of People what we not like. to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The value is the value. Uh -huh. And the value is what somebody will pay for it. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of 
That's a, that's what I was trying to understand, and I've I've always been kind of misty about that. I don't quite because I always related to if you have a piece of land. Yeah. And I mean, it's let's say it's just a beautiful piece of land, but let's say the houses in that neighborhood um, are only selling for three hundred thousand. You wouldn't build like. A starter palace on that house, right. and then have a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar house in that neighborhood. You would because you'd be like over improving. Not to say that your frame job is going to be with all the other ones, but as far as is there a such thing professionally as like over improving your artwork by what you spend on the frame? That's what I was trying to right. get your opinion about. The problem with that question is so much of it is subjective. Okay. Um, and a lot of it also has to do with how you're marketing and how you're selling. Uh -huh. So if you are going to sell at the flea market, right. then you probably want to go to the thrift store and paint on your frames. Right. right. If you're at a craft store, a craft show, then you could probably, if you're at a juried art show, uh -huh. then you could probably, if you're at a art gallery, then you could probably, because it's it's perceived value. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. So it's kind of back to the house thing, and pardon me, because, but that's like a, yeah, house makes about sense. Everybody knows house that. and land, you know. So that would be kind of going along with, okay, well, if you have this piece of land, and it may seem like you're over improving, but if there's somebody who really loves kitchens, they love to cook, and you really put a lot of bells and whistles in the kitchen, yeah. Cambria quartz countertops, and da 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 da, then okay. somebody, that's going to totally justify somebody's... Yeah. Okay, so that's what you're saying, you're saying it just, it's not, it's not a black and white thing. It's really not. Okay. It's really not. So the formula you gave early, about 7 to 15 percent, that was more for us as finding a framing, a, a what, what was the 7 to 15 percent thing then? The research that I have found online that talks about artwork that sells, and the reason I didn't put the slide in, is artwork that sells between a thousand and ten thousand mm dollars. -hmm. You should assume 7 to 15 percent we spent on framing. Okay. Okay. So kind of that, you can use that as a guide, so to speak. Right. Okay. But then the other thing of it is, it depends on who your market is and what they'll Right. Buy. And I guess it would depend too, if you were doing like a custom thing, like if somebody was crazy about the painting and they just wanted the painting yeah. and then they invited you to their house, like to bring the painting to their house and it's not framed yet, right? then that goes a totally different, that can go a totally different way. Right. Too. You can buy a 16 by 20 canvas from me mm -hmm. and you can buy a 16 by 20 canvas from Walmart the quality is going to be different. Right. Um, we had a gal come by, I'm looking for it, and she said, I just bought this canvas, you know, you want to charge me $130 and I just paid $67 for it from this online place. And I was in a mood. And so I ripped her canvas apart. Because <laughs> sometimes I'll do that when I'm in a mood. I ask permission. Mm -hmm. And it was um, vinyl on a pizza box. Mm. Yeah, there are no wooden stretcher bars at all. It's literally a cardboard box folded over and canvas is glued on top of it. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was shocking. She, you mean she put her, she hired this online company to, to print a canvas for, for her? her. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you want to sell at a lower price, then you can buy discount bargain, um, refurbished framing. But you can take a piece of art that didn't cost you very much to create and put a magnificent frame on it mm -hmm. and you can double, triple, quadruple your the perceived value, therefore what you can sell it for. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And I'm sorry yeah. if I'm like... No, I'm just, this, I'm just that's what this is about. I'm just trying to get it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to comprehend that. Um, it's like... I, how can you sell this for a hundred for a hundred and ten dollars? Yeah. Well, look at it. 
It's handmade. It's hand painted. Uh -huh. It's three mats. Yeah. It's shadow box. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So when you look at the details of it, yeah, it starts to make sense. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm asking, and thank you for your patience with that, but I'm asking specifically if, because I, you know, do bigger paintings and it's acrylic canvas and da 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 and so, you know, I mean, I've had people say, well, are you going to frame it? And I'm like, well, I guess we could, you know, kind of thing. I'm like, yeah, sure, we, we can. Yeah, you know. We'd love to. Let's go for a walk. Yeah. Let's to figure out what you want it to be. Yeah. And so I never kind of... I didn't want, you know, I, I just didn't want that to be where people are just paying too much for that or they've already paid 1200 for a painting, then now it's going to be another 400 for the frame. No, you know, it's going to be thing. another 1200 for the frame. <laughs> so this I'm just going to tell Macaulay, I'm going to say, okay. This, this is an original painting. Oh, that's great. And this just happens to be excess wood and stock that I have. It's really happy. And she painted the frame. She did what? She painted the frame. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> so this is this is one of those frame is sold by the linear foot. Uh-huh. Our framing prices start at three dollars a linear foot. Mm -hmm. It goes up to eighty five. The majority of what we sell is in 18 to 26 dollars a linear foot price. This piece, we this molding, we sell for seven dollars a linear foot. And it's just just raw wood. Pretty much, it's white. Uh -huh. So she took it. We made a frame for her, and she painted it. Yeah, that's what I would like to do. Paint up, do a paint up for her. Does it just beach wood, or what is it? I'll show it to you. It's up in the corner. Okay, you can take a look. I would have never thought of doing that, but it was great. Isn't it great? <laughs> yeah. Because she didn't want to spend a lot of money on the frame. But it pops it too. But she wanted something special. It's yeah. very unique, yeah, very special, very yeah. unique. Yeah. So there's job. definitely ways to do it. And if you look at this particular piece without the frame, again, you would look at it and go, wow, I really like that, but um, I'd have to frame it, and I'd have to, I don't know what I would do. We, we did put the... the sh bright pink mat on it. Mm -hmm. in, in that case, the, the, the frame is the art also, in this case. So yeah, it's, it makes it's, it's magnificent. I mean, it wasn't nearly as impressive without the frame. Yeah. Yeah. It. yeah. It's a masterpiece yeah. of the frame. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. really happy. It really, really is. Mm -hmm. So she definitely could double what she paid us for the frame. Yeah and add that on to now the time that she because took. Because as you said, now the frame has become, instead of just containing the artwork, in this case it is, it is part, part, of, part of the artwork. So, okay. But the same thing, I wouldn't call it any better than this. Uh, without the work maybe. So do you mind if I ask you, I don't know if this is yours or for somebody, or, but that image, would be like if you were to buy, if you were buying that at a show, the image without the frame w was how much, and then now framed. It, what, what's I don't know. The I cost? should I should know that. I'm going to take a wild guess yeah. and say that at a show, a piece this size is probably. I don't know. Is it an original? No. Or, okay. What's that? No. Yeah. It's one of my pieces. It started as a photograph. Uh huh. And, and then reworked it. The sixteen twenty. Yeah, so let's say that this is around one forty without the frame. Okay. And let's say that we would probably make it I don't know, three forty with the frame. I don't know. So you get I'm happy to do the math and share it with you. Okay, yeah, I'm just wondering. Yeah, people come in for quotes all the time. And as I, th and as I said, thanks for hanging with me with this, because that's why I came, because yeah. I, I really want to try to get more clear on this, because then I know if I'm more clear, then I will do it. Exactly. Exactly. Rather than it be the great unknown. And, exactly. You know. So as, as we've kind of demonstrated here, 
picking the, the mats and the frames is a creative process in itself. Yeah. And we have uh, you know several people here who are very good at it. So mm -hmm. if you need help, you can feel comfortable in doing it. Um, but our staff can help. Oh, thank you. I would love. I would paint the frames, but I was just more concerned about. I didn't want to overprice. You know, like if I think if, if somebody's paying this for something that I've painted, I'm really grateful that I'm like, wow, they're going to pay that much for it, kind of. You're worth you it. Know? And, then, and then the frame, I, I didn't want to just like be pushing the river, so to speak, by yeah. making the frame, the frame making it too, cost too much. You give them a choice. You can have it with or without. Yeah. You want but fries with that? But I'm gonna, yeah. But I'm gonna play around with that. I'm gonna, I like that idea. I have two more. I, I'm looking over there, and I have two more of that exact frame still in the white. I'll show you. Okay, thanks. Also, your your strategy will change as you become more and more well known and sound more and more. Thank and you for that. From your lips to God's ear. <laughs> <laughs> when you're starting out, you know, you just want to get it out there and hopefully have a buyer. You know, right. Like you can't put too much money in the frame. Yeah, and that's what I. I've been happy for that because it was very accidental. I shared with your beloved. It's been very accidental how I, I just painted for fun and then how it got going. So. But, but once you're more and more demand, you know, then people are willing to pay more for the frame. Mm -hmm. Like I'm starting to sell where, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how much it costs if they really love it. You know, right. Get the higher end collector, the people who, you know, have too much money. You never find those people. Yeah. Like I just sold my the pieces friends. off of my website, and uh, they just decided today, oh, let's ship that overnight. You know, it's an extra $300 to ship it overnight, and it didn't make a difference in the world to them. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, now let's say you do a gallery uh, wrap, and afterwards you say, maybe, uh, or the customer says, uh, they want to put a frame on it. How do, can you put a frame on a gallery wrap? Let me talk about glass and be done with paper, and then we'll get there. I'm coming to it. Huh? I'm coming to it. Oh, you are? Oh, oh okay. I am. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's called a floater frame. We're talking about a floater frame. And they have ones that work with both a three quarter inch stick and a one and a half inch stick. Let, yeah. Is there a talk about that in a minute? Yeah, I've, I've, I've got slides and pictures for you. Okay. So, just to finish up with uh, paper and traditional framing, glass also known as glazing. So um, <laughs> it has a purpose, of course, <laughs> it keeps everything clean. Much past that, you have choices in life and with choices come price tags. So you have regular glass, kind of heavy, that's glass. It protects your art. It does not protect you from harmful UV rays. Then you have the non-glare glass, but that softens the image. It oftentimes makes your art look a little milky. I can show you examples. I have a piece of non-glare glass that I have up in the framing room Then I'll put on top of a piece of art and I'll say, you may have this, are you okay with this? Sometimes you are, sometimes you're not, it's objective. Conservation is up to 97% UV protecting. Museum glass, we love museum glass. It's crazy expensive. Thank you, honey. See the side that looks like there's no glass there? That'd be museum glass. We can take a 30 by 40 piece. We can take a 20 by 30 piece. We can put a beautiful frame on it, and we can pretty much 1.5 times that when we put museum glass on it. I know. But sometimes it's necessary, and so therefore we have it, and we use it a lot. A lot of artists that do high-end shows. We can pass this around. So glass is a consideration. It's something to pay attention to. Plexiglass is another thing to pay attention to. Plexi is more expensive than glass. Mm -hmm. Be very careful when you clean Plexi. It scratches very easily. It's a darn shame to pay for Plexi and then scratch it. 
Flexi is good when you have a wall that can't handle a lot of weight. It's good for oversized pieces because of the safety factor. Huge, yeah. Break would be very dangerous for a large plate of glass. So you use plexiglass in the larger pieces oftentimes. Okay, to frame or not to frame canvas art. Told you we were getting to it. All right, so nowadays we're all into gallery wrap art, which is a lot uh, mostly what we'll do here. And it's great for contemporary homes. Um, it's, it's aesthetic, it's subjective. If you like that look, then you like that look and great. Stretcher bars come in basically three sizes, at least the stretcher bars that we use. So sometimes we'll use a half inch stretcher bar when we're going to frame something. It is a shame for some people when you frame and it sticks up the back. Some people don't like that. Some people don't care. Something to be aware of. Mm -hmm. Carol Merrill over here has. <laughs> this is the, um, the three quarter inch thick. And if you're going to frame it, this is a nice choice because it'll fit in the thinner frames. Uh, this is the one and a half inch one, which I use a lot of my gallery wraps like over here, which can stand on their own without framing. However, if you do want to frame it, then you have to buy a pretty big honking frame to, to fit this into. And, that's what you do. and we do have that, and I've done that with my, uh, my collection for this weekend's show. Uh, I've got it all stretched on this, and we put it in a, a really thick... Uh, Floating stretcher, floating um, molding. Where are you showing this weekend's stuff? It's here. Oh, fr the Friday, Friday night, night here. The, yeah. yeah here Two worlds, Sunday. black and white. Yeah. So you want to pass those around? Yeah. So this is an inch and a half, and this is a floating frame. And so if you bought this piece of art and it's already stretched, but you want it to be framed, then you just do that, conceptually. Mm -hmm. And that's not a problem. We do it all the time. Mm -hmm. I changed my mind, I'd like to have it framed. There's also shadow box frames, there's deep frames, so that if you don't want that contemporary floating frame look, um, you know, this is gallery wrapped already, and I can just put it into here and adhere it. All I have to do is secure the back. Done and done. Just bungee cord it; it'll stay in there. Pretty much. <laughs> A little bit of chewing gum. <laughs> So you can have a three-quarter inch uh, gallery frame. I would think always your gallery frame would always be much thicker. You know? Technically, what the phrase gallery wrap means is that the image goes around the edge. Oh, I get you. That means it can hang on a wall without a frame if you choose. Mm -hmm. Many artists do not continue their images on the edge. Gallery wraps are stapled on the back. Many artists you'll see will staple here. That means you have to frame it. Smart artists staple on the back and paint their edges a neutral color. That way the buyer has a choice to frame or not to frame. You should always think about what's gonna happen next. Sometimes people do and sometimes they don't. And that's what that talks about. We put these on YouTube after. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. I staple on the back, and then I do. I paint the frame, the edges, my, like my background, whatever my background color is. is That's nice. Just on there. That's thoughtful. So people can do whatever. So there's your two-inch matte black gallery float frame. That's kind of a staple in the world. This is a piece uh, that we did that's hanging in the, the center club. 
So an example of a float frame. There's your panel art. Interesting treatment for a floating frame. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm -hmm. Gallery wrap. Then we put it in a frame. Just like the little black dress. So black float frames, just like your one inch, two inch black flat is a great go-to frame. If what you want to do is say all of my pieces will be a cohesive collection because they will all have consistent framing and I will be able to buy it in bulk for a good price. Um, a black float frame is a great go-to frame. Um, Scott's go-to frame is the champagne frame. I call it champagne because it works with warm as well as cool colors. So whether somebody has gold in their home or silver in their home, this works. It's got black edges. So this is just what we've always used for his stuff. Um, liners are to canvases what mat is to paper. We talked about that already. Um, the purpose is to separate the art from the frame just to give the eye a resting place. So there's your example of a beautiful linen liner on a beautiful piece of art with a beautiful gold frame. Framing for a show. So the most important rule is to read the instructions. <laughs> if they have an opinion, they will tell you. And if you don't frame correctly, they won't let you in. They'll kick you out. They'll charge you to fix it. All kinds of stuff. Amazing how many people don't read instructions. Typically, it's a white mat and a black frame. Usually, depending on the level of the show, if you're at this end, no. If you're here, you have some leeway. White versus cream. Flat profile versus a slant. Find out. It's nice when you can have a cream and a little bit of an edge on your frame so that you can differentiate yourself so that whatever the style of your art is is reflected in the style of the frame. But somebody might not appreciate it and you don't want to piss off the judge before you get there. Um, wiring. So this is wired. If there was no wire on here, these are called D-rings, or there's the sawtooth, or there's security hardware. So you want to find out what does the show want. We always, when we do shows, we always ask for it to be wired because we have things, hooks that come down, and we charge people $15 if you don't deliver it to us correctly because it's a pain. And people didn't read right. I'm kind of hurrying because I'm aware of the time. So the best solution is to find a friend at a custom frame shop. <laughs> you knew this you know was coming. Uh, there's a good one down the street. <laughs> okay. That matches prices. And we have deals for resellers. So I have... Um, we have a number of collections we have these sheets, they're already priced out, and they're on the reseller section of our website. And so if you're not into the reseller section of our website, then we will help you get in there. Um, we have decorative, we have color, we have our staff's pick, we have wood, we have distressed. And that's my show. Yay! Yes. My favorite art place hoping that my favorite art place becomes your favorite art place. That was very good, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jerry. Uh, you put a lot of work into this, a lot of time. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Well, if I can help you guys be better educated, then 
you'll go out there with more confidence, which is what we were talking about. If you feel more confident, then you're comfortable a asking and answering questions. And even if you just say, I don't know, you can say that more confidently. And then you'll sell more, and we want to help you sell more. So you're welcome to stick around. There's uh, still more food. Um, I have business cards here because there's uh, some new people, so I'll pass out my card. And uh, any way that we can help you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's your restroom, please? We don't have one of those. Okay. Where's the back door? <laughs> uh, the first door right there. <laughs> My pleasure. It's nice to see you. I hope we see you again soon. Yes, thank you. Dan, are you genius on framing now? <laughs>